welcome to the third and final episode of Fragrant Petals, Kamala's Natyam. If you have not watched episodes 1 and 2, I recommend you do because this is not a short story. It is an epic tale about an epic heroine in Bharatanatyam's historic timeline, Kamala. She burst into the dance scene at the age of 4. And by the time she was 14, she had become the aspirational role model for thousands of young girls who wanted to dance just like Kamala. Her rise to eminence was via two concurrent dance careers, on stage and on the silver screen. Through edited clips of Kamala's film dances, plus treasured personal reflections, we have been gazing at the born to dance life of a remarkable artist and her synergy with the Indian cinema, spanning three decades, the 1940s, 50s and 60s. I am Rama Bharadwaj and a student of this celebrated dancer. At the invitation of Dr. Anita Ratnam, I have curated and scripted this three episode series, Fragrant Petals, Kamala's Natyam, and this is the third and concluding episode. So, welcome Rasikas. Oh, Rasikum Simane Nangal Jolikum Uday Anin the Kalikum Nadanam Puri Vom Ide Nine Kumboru the Manaminika Manakumbore Kamala Malareta Rubom. The 1960s an explosive decade for Kamala, both in the positive and negative sense of the word. Her troubled marriage with the renowned cartoonist R.K. Lakshman collapsed, causing her major heartbreak, for she was only 26. But one man's loss was the world's gain. Kamala plunged back into her dance with an unreal concert schedule of around 200 performances in a year. During this phase, she honed her style, her speed, her agility to such effortless perfection that during one concert, she won the admiration of her own guru, Ramaya Pillai. It happened in Sri Lanka. The main piece, Varnam, was about to start. And as was customary, Ramaya Pillai sang the first line of the song to set the pace. But he immediately realized what he had done. This pace was way too fast. This Varnam had the already high speed famous Varur Jatis to be completed in first, second and third speeds. And then there was the second half of the Varnam which would almost double in speed. But Ramaya Pillai had a principle. Once the pace is set, he will not change it. So they all prayed and started the music. Kamala entered the stage with a gleam in her eyes. And that day, when she finished and walked off the stage without even panting for breath, she won the intense admiration of her guru, plus standing ovation from the audience. Ramaya Pillai himself recounted this incident decades later with tears in his eyes and said, none could have done it then or ever. So. What was this speed, this technical mastery, this grace that everybody raved about? Well, you can catch a glimpse of it in this next clip. Dandai the Pani Pillai's choreography, obviously embellished by Kamala. <laughs> Thank you. 
Kamala dances with someone that she has mentored in real life and it brought recollections of my own dance classes with her. I remember this gesture for beautiful. I had gotten into the habit of repeatedly exaggerating it and the non-aesthetics of it annoyed her. So one day she just burst out. Yanadi, idli kumavatriya? Meaning, are you trying to grind batter for idlis? Even today, when I do this gesture, images of white fluffy idlis float around in my head. It's not that Kamala was a grouchy teacher. On the contrary, she was most friendly and sincere. In fact, I don't even remember her ever sitting down during class. But she had no patience for laziness because throughout her life, she herself had been the epitome of hard work. For her own sisters, Radha and Vasanti, Kamala was the first teacher with Radha becoming her occasional on-screen dance companion as well, like in this film, Bhakta Kuchela, in which they dance some kind of Manipuri inspired movement. Now, a word about the film. We all know the story of how Kuchela took a bundle of beaten rice or poha when he went to see his friend Krishna. So, when the film was marketed, the company gave away packets of poha along with film notices. How about that? that are none of our business. While Kamala anguished over the split, it also forced her to start choreographing on her own. And here is where we see the impact of her lifelong dancing for film choreographies. For example, in a four minute film dance, every movement phrase had to be fresh and different and exciting. But in the traditional dancing style, a dancer would repeat the exact same gestures to a line of a song three times in the center, to the right and to the left. Kamala always found this utterly boring. But Ramaya Pillai justified it with the explanation that if the audience missed the gesture the first time, they could catch it the second or the third time. Now that Kamala was on her own, she began creating classical choreographies just the way she wanted with exciting variations. 
As a young student, when I switched over from Ramaya Pillai and Samraj to Kamala, I noticed it and found it extremely stimulating. On screen too, Kamala began choreographing her own solos, like this dance from the classic mega hit film Kunjum Salangai, in which she also had a prominent acting role. I like this dance for its calm choreography and also Kamala's costumes. This song is in praise of deities in five temple towns, Chidambaram, Sri Rangam, Madurai, Tiruchendur and Sri Villiputur. For each town, Kamala's entire attire, including her hairstyle, changes. Kunjum Salangai also had the distinction of being the only Tamil film that was shot and processed in Technicolor, the world's most expensive color processing. Well, the first line of the song says, Kana Kan Kodi Vendum. To receive this beatific vision, one crore eyes are needed. How appropriate for this dance.
was a motivation for scores of Bharatanatyam dancers. But did you know that the Kuchipudi legend Vempati Chinnasatyam had also been inspired by her dance? Once he himself told me that when he was young, he would save his small allowances so that he could buy a ticket for Kamala's performance. The sculptural quality of her dance inspired him to later expand the Kuchipudi movements in his own style. So, this goddess of dance inspired the world. But who inspired her? Kamala mentions Ram Gopal and Bala Saraswati along with Bhaskar Roy Chaudhary and Uday Shankar, all dancers of her time. But she also admired the dancing skills of the movie bombshell, Silk Smita, whom she calls, and I quote, marvelous and fantastic dancer. This is one more thing I remember about Kamala, that she appreciated dancing ability wherever it was. And she never spoke ill of any dancer ever. She was beyond the politics of dance. She was dance, born to leap like a deer and sway like a peacock. I mean, literally also, okay? Leap like a deer and sway like a peacock. Well, just watch this clip and you'll know what I mean. <laughs> segment of this episode and I begin this with my mother Nagalakshmi. She was a Kamala junkie. She had a collection of Kamala memorabilia, newspaper clippings, interviews, reviews from the early 1950s, years before I was born. It must have been her lifelong admiration for Kamala that resulted in me becoming her student via Padma Bhushan, Dr. T. N. Ramachandran, with whom Kamala was studying dance theory. My twin and I were 12 years old when he took us to her house and told her, I want these children to continue their training with you. So please teach them. And she did, without taking a single paisa as fee. The dance critic K. M. Rangaswamy once interviewed the renowned dancers of this era and wrote that 99% of them had been inspired by Kamala, including our own Anita Ratnam. But the best definition of Kamala's ability to mesmerize came from a very dear friend and brilliant dance exponent, Nala Najan, who lived in New York. 
darling, Nala once told me. She knew how to seduce them from the stage. She had them eating out of her hand. This declaration is best represented by one song. The one that you have been hearing me sing throughout this entire series as my theme song. Now, I let Kamala dance it for you via Hira Lal's choreography. And may the seduction continue. <laughs> marriage collapsed so early in her life. But there is an African saying, the blessing is next to the wound. And in Kamala's life, this man was that blessing, Major Lakshmi Narayanan, whom she met and married in 1964. Kamala had now entered the fourth phase of her life. From baby Kamala to Kumari Kamala to Kamala Lakshman to Kamala Lakshmi Narayanan. They say, Four is a foundation, and that is what this jovial and kind man was to her life. In the decade of the 70s, Kamala focused exclusively on her stage career, even receiving the Padma Bhushan from the government of India when she was only 36. I'm often asked, do you know where Kamala lives now? Of course I know where she lives in the very heart of Bharatanatyam. As Mr. Pattabiraman, the founder of Shruti magazine wrote, in the Bharatanatyam Hall of Fame, Kamala's position cannot be replaced. So what next for Kamala? Well, for the past several years, she has been expressing a yearning to make a sort of biopic movie. I hope her wish comes true. I am Rama Bharadwaj and it has been a joy scattering these fragrant petals towards you. My thanks to the Indian cinema for creating these gems and to Kamala Akka for the inspirations. 
and to you my rasikas oh rasikum seemane naangal jolikum udai anindu kalikum nadanam purindom idai neenekkum boludhu manam inikka manakkum oru kamala malarai thandom elil kamala malarai thandom